And I guess many would say one of the great examples of wokeism um, this week has been news out of the um, midwife sector in New Zealand. Um, uh, a review into the scope of practice for New Zealand midwives has led the New Zealand Midwifery Council to recommend the dropping of the words mother and woman from its guidelines. The suggestion is that the um, word be words be pronu- prema- uh, the suggestion is that the words be replaced with fano. The omissions are one of many changes in the document in an effort to be more inclusive and address a detrimental, uh, a detrimental imbalance of representation, understanding and appreciation of Maori knowledge, values and practice, apparently. Well, joining us now um, for their take on this and to find out their role in this is the Chief Executive Officer of the New Zealand College of Midwives, uh, Alison Eddy. Ms Eddy, Alison, welcome to the platform. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Good morning, Sean. All right, so what prompted you to initiate these changes? What level of concern were you getting and from whom as to what the problems was or these the problematic words women, oh, sorry, mother and woman? So can I just be clear, Sean? Um, so we re- I represent the New Zealand College of Midwives. Yep. It's the Midwifery Council yep. who are proposing these changes. And so you supported these changes? Con- well, easy to be um, confused, but okay. we have distinctly right. different roles. Yeah. Okay. So the, the scope of practice that the council is um, updating is the sort of the gazetted. It's a gazetted regulatory statement that sits under the Health Practitioners Competence Assurance Act. So it describes the health services that a midwife is authorised to prescribe. So it has right. a very specific and important role. Yeah. Um, so we are not the council. I don't represent the council. I represent the college. So we're yeah. a professional association. So we have distinctly different So you're roles. the people who will be working under these rewritten right. or, or recommended rewritten guidelines. Do you support this rewriting? Well, this, you know, it's a nuanced discussion. And I think what... Um, what we understand, the council. I mean, we, you know, as health professionals throughout New Zealand working in, in the sector, um, we see the absolute inequities that exist for Māori. That's really stark and very clear for us. Um, and so, uh, well, we hang on, let's go there. I'd like to examine those. What yeah. are the inequities that exist? Yeah. Uh, so we see high mortality for Māori babies How much and Māori mothers. Uh, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, um, but it's it's a significant difference. Um, more preterm births. Um, you know, you know, complications, things like that. So, mm-hmm. so there are these are just manifestations of, of poor health that are re- related to a whole lot of other reasons. Okay, so, no, I just you know, want to no, 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 no. I just want to clarify those yeah. numbers because you've raised them. Yes. So, yeah. Maori represent what proportion of births in New Zealand? Uh, oh, about twenty-two percent, something like 22%. that. Twenty-two percent. So, twenty-two yes. percent. Yeah, roughly. Have yeah. what you yeah. can't tell me is a slightly well. I you say a very much higher proportion of problems. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And All we right. have for Pacific community as well. And okay, so it's not just Maori. Um, yep. Yeah. No, no, no. So, so I suppose well, what I would say is the council is wanting to you know, um, acknowledge and honour different worldviews. We respect and understand that. But our feedback to them has been a scope of practice has a specific regulatory function. Mm. It needs to be clear and unambiguous. It needs to be very clear who the midwife is authorised to provide hands-on clinical Mm. care to. Mm. We have always worked as a health profession and meet the woman where she is. If she has whoever she wants involved in her care, we absolutely respect and acknowledge that there's generally always a partner, a dad, mostly. Yeah. Uh, we completely, utterly always understand that the necessity of that woman having whoever is important to her involved in that process. That's not ever, that's been... Yeah, good on you. And, and, and that's a job. It's an important and that, and that, job. Yeah. It's absolutely right. So that so this this change is sort of a way I think of the, of that acknowledgement from the Māori worldview. But our feedback to the council has been, um, you need to be very specific and clear who the midwife is actually authorised to put. Okay, their but but I'm, I, I, I look I, I fail to see mm-hmm. how using the word far now, apart from a piece of virtue signalling, materially improves delivery of services to any mother. Or woman, no matter what you call them. Well, a scope of practice doesn't, in and of itself, 
change anything. You're, you're quite right, actually, because it doesn't, it actually, uh, unless you're expanding the services the midwife can provide so she yeah. can do more care. Or having more midwives. And I, yeah, yeah, that would be good. <laughs> We'd like that. Um, so that, that is part of the intention of what the council's wanting to do too. It's wanting to extend. So, what so I, I'm do sorry, to what practical, what practical sense does taking the words mother and woman out of the gu guidelines achieve? Well, I think that's, that's up for debate, and I suggest, you know, suspect that... That's well, a well, well, can you... Need, are you supportive of the change? Well, what I would say, Sean, is that we're supportive of the intent behind the change, but we've been... Well, very what is the intent behind the change? Well, I, I think it's actually about acknowledging that there are different worldviews in the way people live and experience their lives, and that... What um, the you know, hell has that got to do... What the <laughs> hell has that got to do with delivering midwife services? Yeah, well, you know, it's the, it's the nature and the way that you go about it, I suppose, Sean. Well, well I go about what? We, As you yeah. just said, the only way to improve it is have more or have more funding or have more resources. Yeah, yeah. And I think just to be really clear... Because this well, just seems... I'm sorry, I'm going to be honest with you, Alison. This just looks like politically correct claptrap. Yeah, yeah. So I'd be... Uh, is that <laughs> really is your yes in agreement that it is? No, I'm not saying that. What I'm what I'm saying is the um, we do need to think about how we deliver health services so we improve those inequities. We want but and you would agree really that changing some the, words doesn't do anything to achieve that. Well, then we need a lot more than changing words if we're going well, to. Well, does do make changing words make any diff practical <laughs> difference, Alison? It's a simple well, question. Well, it is actually also the, the scope of practice change is also expanding the, the nature of the services that midwives can potentially provide. So that's part of the change as well. So it's looking does at... Does getting know, rid of, of the yeah. words mother <laughs> and woman from the guidelines do anything to achieve any of that? I can't answer yes or no to that. Why not? Because it hasn't happened yet. It hasn't happened yet. Well, so well we in your opinion, will it? <laughs> uh, I think the jury's out on that one. And I suppose what well, I'd also Alison, say... Well, Alison, come on, come on, come yeah. on. Are yeah. you afraid yeah. of saying something that might get you branded unwoke? Or politically incorrect? No, Are you no, afraid I'm not, of the, because I, Then answer no, the question. No, I'm not. A, so what was the question again? My sorry? question is, <coughs> if implemented, will the removal of the words mother and woman from the guidelines, to your mind, in any way practically improve or enhance the delivery of midwifery services in New Zealand? Uh I, could, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I can't say yes or no because it hasn't happened yet. And it's well, not, no, 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 no. That wasn't statement. my question, Alison. In your opinion, were this to happen, would it enhance or improve? I can't. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I think it will make a difference, potentially. What difference uh, will so it, it make? Okay, okay, you think, what difference do you <laughs> think it will make? So what? So, so there's a whole other process behind this, right? So the scope of practice sets out what midwives can do, and then there's a whole other document that sits behind it, which is the competencies, which are being rewritten as well to reflect the scope of practice. So that is where the rubber hits the road, in my view. That is what describes how and what midwives do. So whether there's a material difference in those, yeah. We get to see because we haven't seen them. They haven't been produced yet. Um, this is the whole work program that the council is undertaking. Mm -hmm. So what I would say, though, Sean, is as a professional association, we are very clear that we will not be removing the words woman or mother uh, from any of our documents. That is never, that is not going to happen, ever. So um, that, I suppose, gives you a sense of the importance that midwives as a profession uh, have as a view of the, these words. Thank you for getting us to that. Alison, I don't think there's anyone, any doubt of anyone who reads uh, media coverage <laughs> in any volume in this country knows we do have a huge shortage of midwives. There are places in the country, particularly in the South Island, uh, where I know uh, people are being called to do more work than is humanly possible for an individual. Um, no matter what words we use to describe the services you provide or the scope of those services, uh, how do we solve that problem? And is it simply one oh, of resource? <coughs> it's resource, but it's actually, I think it's years and years of lack of attention and workforce planning at a national, you know, sort of really strategic level. We've relied on um, people turning up to be midwives because they're committed to the job, they love what they do. And we've, we're just chewing them, chewing them up and spitting them out because the, there aren't enough of them. They're working so hard. And I think we're really disappointed that this government hasn't actually got a specific initiative for midwifery. We've seen 
a lot of attention to nursing and credit to them. They're, they're in dire straits as well and they need all the help they can get. <coughs> as do medicine, I mean, doctors are, are short too, but we've <coughs> we'd like to see some actually some really targeted specific initiatives in the periphery as well. I feel like we've, the government's missed the boat a bit on that one yeah. at this point. Alison, I wonder too, you know, I wonder how many meetings were had, how much resource went into getting rid of the words mother and woman. Um, yes. And yeah, how well much of that money might have gone to exactly what you were just calling for? Yeah, good, good point. Are you not allowed to say that you agree with me? Because you might have uh, said Look, I, I think what I would say is there's mixed views in our profession about this. Um, yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm not speaking on behalf of myself, I'm speaking on behalf of our professional yeah. association, our member association, midwives. And I think, as I said, <coughs> universally, midwives agree that the health inequities that we see in our work um, are, are dreadful and unacceptable. Yeah. And we do need to change, change that up. It's not fair and it's not right, actually. And I think the statistics, you know, bear that out. Um, so we need to think of lots of ways that we need to do things differently. Um, this is potentially one of them. Um, <clears throat> but in and of itself, changing words on paper, I think you're quite right, I'd agree with your point, are not materially going to make the difference that we need. Yeah, it's real change that we need. Alison, I thank you for your uh, time um, this morning. Okay, and I wish you and your members, because I think you do fantastic work, uh, and I think we've got to fix thank the you. problems you've got uh, in this country because you do terrific work for all of us. I thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye. Alison Eddy from the New Zealand uh, College of Midwives. Well, we got there in the end. Um, yeah, she doesn't actually think changing these words and the guidelines is going to make a blind bit of difference. It's about resource. Oh, I'm sorry if I was a bit grumpy there. Or something. Oh, you talked over. I was trying to get to the point. We got to the point in the end. Um, and good stuff and good honour.